today in the lab. We've got some interesting stuff for a new project here. Maybe I'm gonna write something about it. So like a lot of things in my life, I had a little bit too much to drink over Thanksgiving and then I got on the eBay and uh, and <laughs> bid on something and I actually didn't think I was going to win uh, but lo and behold I did. So what I have in my hands right here is a uh, accelerator board still, still wrapped in plastic for a Commodore Amiga 2000. Now this particular unit is a uh, uh, Tech Magic, um, which uh, was made by Great Valley Products, and this one has a 68060, which, in terms of uh, the time frame, was the most powerful CPU that you could put in a Commodore Amiga, and it really is the the last of the true 68K line, uh, and. Uh, you know, just a very, uh, at the time, the most powerful chip you could get. So anyhow, <laughs> now I have this accelerator board. It's still wrapped in plastic here. Um, but like I said, I didn't think I was going to win the Amiga 2000 uh, that this will fit into with my very first computer. And uh, I still have it. It's sitting over in my closet here. But really, it hasn't been any more uh, upgraded than than uh, what it came with. So I had to buy a few things to go with this in order to make this work. Notably, a, uh, a ROM. So this is a Kickstart 3.1 ROM. I thought about getting the new uh, Kickstart 3.1.4 ROM, um, but I figured I didn't know how that would handle uh, with, this, with this accelerator board. So rather than potentially waste the money I went with the old standby. Also, new new set of workbench discs. I think this is my third set, but um, still very useful. And uh, the Amiga kit has the uh, new old stock of the old classic Amiga mouse mice. So I went ahead and bought one of those. I mean, why the hell not? But really, what I what I was going to buy was an adapter because all my mice for the Amiga are all rollerball. Um, so anyhow, with this uh, this bit of kit here. Um, and a spare um, spare graphics card and a Ethernet card. I'm going to see if I can make the old Amiga 2000 into a I wouldn't say a modern machine, but at least a, a more powerful thing than what it once was. So stay tuned, and we'll see what happens. All right. So here's our unit here. I appreciate the or uh, excuse the harsh lighting. <laughs> A little bit, uh, but um, pretty stock Mega 2000. You know, this was originally my dad's, um, and I don't think he ever did much with it. Um, but uh, never had any expansion boards or anything like that in it. Um, but still in pretty good condition, even though it's been uh, moved around quite a bit, several different states. Uh, they did, they made them a lot better. This was a very highly, high quality machine that was produced to a high standard um, in terms of uh, what it was what it was good for. Um, if you notice, use my camera work here. On the bottom there's uh, cork feet instead of rubber feet so nothing to make a big, a big mess. Um, oddly enough, the keyboard and uh, joystick and mouse ports are in the front. Um, and the floppy disk unit is another thing I'm going to have to replace. Um, luckily, there's been a couple on eBay recently. This has been a this is a weird dimension. It's not a standard height uh, drive, so finding drives that fit in this are a little difficult. Now. Uh, this this unit does have a battery backed up clock in it, and uh, it was one of those old round barrel batteries that has a tendency. Uh, in fact, heck, I think I got one over here. Let's see. Uh, but one of those round barrel ba uh, batteries that has a tendency to leak all over the place. Let's see. Anyhow, well, we'll find that. We'll find that later. 
But anyhow, I was uh, fortunate enough to have the bright sense to replace that several years uh, several years ago. So, although I haven't looked at my handiwork since then, <laughs> it's probably pretty, um, but pretty shitty job, I'd imagine. But it did uh, when I did it keep time and had a, a lithium cell in there. So. So it should be in pretty good condition. We'll power it on here in a moment once we get the the monitor over and uh, see if it at least boots up to kickstart. And if it boots up to kickstart, then we're good to go to continue. Otherwise, might have to get uh, some more surgical repair done on this. All right, so let's see how we do here. Now, interestingly enough, this was back when computers had power switches in the back. Alright, we got life. Disk drive. There we go. Mega Workbench 1.3. Uh, looks like my power LED is out. That might have been from the last time I was inside of there. I might have forgotten to reconnect it and then just said fuck it. Um... But we're looking good to start this project here. Alright, so I'm having to refilm this section here. But, uh, my camera didn't save it beforehand. But I've got the, the, the unit all disassembled here. And um, the, the reason I'm disassembling it is to replace this chip right here. So this is the uh, the Kickstart ROM chip. Um, I have a new one here. Uh, focus, please. Then I'm going to put in to upgrade this to the latest version. This is Kickstart 3.1. Actually, it's no longer the latest version. There was uh, a uh, a new version released this year, not actually very long ago, um, uh, by. Uh, I'm not actually sure who released it, but I decided for this one to go with the the proven. I know this one will work with this with this board, versus something that was just released this year that I don't know if it'll work. So I've uh, I've used my handy dandy little chip puller here to actually already go ahead and extract this. I'm gonna remove this from here, and um, if you look here, there's a, a little lip to help you orientate the two chips so I'll, I'll press it down here off a of video because it's a little delicate of an operation but while we have this thing open let's uh let's take a little look around this motherboard um, if you're used to PCs um, there's some noticeable difference here although you may look at these slots up here and think uh, those look like PC slots um, but anyhow here we have uh, the Motorola 68000 chip. This was second sourced from another company, so it doesn't have the Motorola logo. I don't. I forget what the S stands for. Um, we can also see some of the custom chips with the the names on the board. So there's Fat Lady, also known as Agnes, uh, Gary, Paula. Paula was the the sound chip. Uh, Denise. Um, and somewhere around here is the buster chip, but it might not actually be labeled. Um, at any rate, so that, those are the custom chips plus the CPU that makes me such a special machine. They were basically high-end graphics chips. Um, let's see, then for the slots here, this is the one that we're most interested in for this upgrade. This is the, uh, the CPU slot. Now, this wasn't on the very earliest Amiga 2000s, but on um, uh, the revision that I have, which is, uh, if we look here, Vision 4.3, um, we have this here. So this is the, the slot that the accelerator board is going to plug into, and it's basically a direct access into the CPU bus uh, there. We also have, then, these 100-pin expansion board slots. These are Zorro. Zorro 2 slots, um, and uh, so I have a, a, like I said, a spare graphics card that's going to allow me to hook this into a normal VGA monitor. 
I also have an Ethernet device, um, and you could plug in other things like an IDE adapter and things of that nature, but um, because this board has a SCSI interface on it, I will probably be using that for, um, for my disk drives and things like that. Um, so these are the Zorro card, these are the Zorro slots. Now these up here are in fact PC slots. Um, one of the selling points of the Amiga was you could buy a special board, they called it a bridge board, that would connect these slots and these slots and allow you to essentially run an IBM XT or IBM AT on your Amiga and have that display come up, you know, on a single display and things of that nature. Um, so, by default, these are not electrically connected to anything. The power lines are run, but the data lines just talk amongst each other. So the bridge board really is a PC uh, on a card that connects both to this and then to this that makes these electrically active. Um, so I don't have one of those, but maybe I'll get one. Um, so now then the final thing is this video slot over here. This is basically a direct access into the video port. Um, so, there were cards made, uh, that were, like, skin doublers and flicker fixers to, uh, uh to me communicate here. In fact, I have a, I have a video card for my other Amiga called a Picasso 4 that, uh, has lines for this, um, so that you can have a single unified VGA output that has both the original custom chip video output as well as the new graphics card output. Um, but... Um, I'm not going to put that in this machine. Um, it, it's much better as a Zorro 3 card and an Amiga 4000. I think I have a Spectrum video card that I'm going to put in here. But we'll see those later. Um, anyhow, so that's kind of a tour of the motherboard. I guess the only other thing, obviously, this is the big bank of RAM chips over here. Yes, uh, RAM it used to come on chips like that. You notice there's no SIM slots or DIMM slots on the board. That's because uh, you would actually plug a RAM expansion either here or actually very slow RAM into these Zorro slots. Um, so, anyhow, I'm going to put this custom chip in and then um, reassemble this, uh, this computer and, uh, you know, hopefully all will work. Alright, so now we have this thing back together enough to see uh, if that new custom, if that new uh, Kickstart ROM chip works. If, if this does work, then I'm going to replace this floppy drive, throw in the accelerator, and see what happens. So, let's flip the switch. Looking pretty good. I heard a, a ting. There we go. Mega Kickstart ROM 3.1. Very nice. Um, all right.